he is. Just inexperienced with racing with these guys. Oh! Trouble, but one car on its side. Harness is there. Spinning around is Mark Gibson. He gets tagged again. At least five cars are involved. Harness down on the right side of your screen. The 42 car was running third. Gibson, his car. There's Andy Hillenberg in the Stan Hoover car. Car number 80. Let's see if we can see what, what triggered this. Boy, Gibson up on his side. Back down on all four. Look at Shane Doe's come. The yellow car on the inside is Shane. He's trying to spin through this deal. Meanwhile, Joe Rutman goes in and hits the 59 car. Shane picks up some sheet metal. Farther down the trial, well, there's Hillenberg in the 80 car with part of the front end of the Jim Dandy car crammed under it. That's why his car wouldn't go any further. And what happens is Gibson just lost control and goes back across the racetrack right in front of Dan Partis in the 42 car. Wow. Kind of just like it, a tire went flat or something. It looked just like, if you, if you remember back to the opening, Kimmel's accident, it looked the same way. It got a little bit out of shape, and when he corrected, it came back and shot straight, straight across the racetrack. Partis had nowhere to go and drove him up on his side. Now, from the Jim Dandy in car, let's see uh, Joe Rutman's viewpoint from this. Shane Yoder spins around. He will come into contact again. Okay, now from our blimp angle. Watch Gibson, Kyle, as he comes off the corner, and all of a sudden the, the car just goes around. A very slow spin. And he corrects. And when he corrects, he comes back across, and he get, just gets drove up on his side. Great shot. All the way up on its side. The car comes back down on all fours. Look at Shauna Robinson just make it by. And, and Bobby Hamilton Jr., both of those did a great job of splitting. That could have been really bad. Well, let's check it in the garage. I think Bill has caught up with Andy Sheriff Hill. Briggs, Cunningham, and all the sponsors, you know, thought we really thought this was our race. And we're just sitting there riding and just taking our time and waiting until somebody made a mistake. And it's, I guess it's not meant. You need to be aggressive. And right now we've got a crash on the racetrack as Shane Yoder is in trouble. Shane Yoder, indeed, Ray, has looped it around and come into contact with the outside retaining wall, the Midway Island Ford having its trouble here the mark thompson owned car now you are on with the roof cam with shane Yoder. we told you it's only his second ever asphalt start that will bring out the caution flag for the second time today here on lap number 29 right behind these cars there we see and we see yoder down on the apron of the racetrack and back across the racetrack he's going to make contact with the outside retaining wall with both the front and the rear but the damage really was done when he goes down and hits the apron right there. Just knocks the front end off the car and renders it uncompetitive. All right, his uh, roof camera. We'll watch riding along with him and see exactly what happened, Kyle. Yeah, before that other replay, it, it got loose getting in the corner. I don't know if he got tapped or had a tire go down, but it got loose on the initial turn in. You could see it start. He come down across the flat and, like Benny said, back to the end and then... When you come down off that bank, it kills everything. All right, let's check in down with Bill Webb. Anything crazy and just, just driving a good, clean race. It's been a while since she's been on a speedway, super speedway, and she's doing really well. There's John Kinder, slow in the April of the racetrack, a California driver out of Santa Ana. Oh, we got another crash going in turn one. Got two cars involved, one high and one low. It's Kevin Council, the white car on the outside. Oh, Norm Benning is sliding on the inside, and boy, Kevin Counselor just got down before getting T-boned. So caution waving for the third time today. Look at this big mix-up. And right behind it, it looks like these two cars made contact, Kyle, somehow. Yeah, somehow they made contact with each other before they ever got to the corner. Um, and they end up, this is, it looked a lot closer from where we were sitting. Now on TV, it doesn't look that close. But they just, they made contact before that and just got into each other and um, no place to go after that. Maybe having a career on, is a super speedway ARCA race. Well, that's what the business of auto racing is all about. Once you get bit by the bug, there is, seems to be no other reason. Oh, the pace car has been cranked. The 51 car has hit the pace car and there is the safety car over there on the on the apron that's joe cooks in the 51 car and there's the pontiac grand prix safety car the official car as they are and joe cooks
Brooks, he's climbed down. There's Buster Alton getting out of the car. That's good. Buster's moving around. Was Buster driving the car? I would think so. He normally does. Is a pace car driver. He's getting out the right side of the car. That's what's... Uh... Buster looks like a regular Winston Cup driver getting out, surveying the damage. Back at Daytona, Daytona Beach, Florida, there is the new pace car, the new Pontiac Grand Prix pace car on the racetrack, leading the field by. Now, a moment ago, a very bizarre occurrence here at Daytona. The pace car was actually sitting in turn three, waiting for the field. They had told the leader the pace car would pick up the leader in turn three. Joe Cooksey, driving the car number 51, a four-year ARCA veteran, was about three, maybe four laps down, and there was contact. He apparently maybe was coming off the racetrack. Speculation was he may have been coming off the racetrack to come down pit road and turned down and never saw the pace car sitting there. Big air hot.